Divine Truth Assistance Group. This group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the Texas USA 2013 series. The topic is Leading Groups with Love, presented by Jesus and Mary on the 16th of November 2013 in Austin, Texas, USA. This is session nine. Mm-hmm. Well, this is what I was uh, wanting to lead into at the beginning, is that um, Facebook groups and physical groups are not that... There's more similarities than you think. They're identical, really. Yes. So if we take the example in my home, where I'm the leader and someone comes and they have a higher condition of love than I do, but I don't want to acknowledge it, who's going to lead the group? If you just have the mic back, yeah, sorry. The person who's formed it, because that's their, it's their group until they either, they relinquish it or sort of move back and let it start evolving. Yeah, uh, or until they acknowledge that yeah. condition. Yeah. So this is where we have to be careful, where we go, oh, if more loving people come, it'll just naturally all work itself out. That's not necessarily the case. Okay, thank you. And in fact, what we've found many times, more loving people will come and they get hammered by the group, which is a very common thing that we see observe, or, and observe on groups like Facebook groups or forums. And... And that's something, obviously, there's an indication of the poor condition of the entire group. Otherwise, they wouldn't hammer somebody that's new coming along to the group. And perhaps we can explain hammering a little bit. You know, they're criticised, they're told that they're wrong, they're... They're pulled um, down. Most of the time, they revert to personal attack. Personal attack of the person's features, face, body, character, nature... Like, you know, they always generally, people who want to pull down another usually revert to personal attack. There's not, there's not an underlying desire to help the person. There's an underlying desire to pull, the, pull them the bits, basically, or and destroy them. To control them. them, to control their presence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we're skipping ahead of ourselves a bit of fear of field because firstly, the condition of the person forming the group is going to have a large effect on the, what happens at the group. Now... The person forming the group really is the owner. From God's perspective, the per- any time you create anything, it's your responsibility. Does that make sense? So if you go and create a group just in your own home, from God's perspective, it's your responsibility what happens in that group. You can see you've now, st- put, you've now created a de facto condition where you are taking the responsibility of a teacher. It's a de facto condition. Even if you form a group and, and don't actually do any personal teaching, you're still, in, you're still responsible for that group. And also, you've, you're, you are the de facto teacher in a lot of ways. Your example is going to determine greatly what people are going to do, feel like they can get away with, feel like they have to conform to. Your example is going to have a very large effect. So... The, the, condi- the person forming the group is a, you could say de facto, if you like, teacher of the group through their example, in particular, number one, so A, through example, and B, through their actual words, their actual teachings, whatever they decide to share, through their sharing. And also, if we look at it, the person who um, forms a group has, from God's perspective, the responsibility for the condition of love. Does that make sense? So you form a group, you now have responsibility for its condition of love. Now, of course... Because many of us have an injured condition of love, we, we don't know what that means. You know, we think that means, oh, as long as everyone's saying bartery things, I say, oh, you look lovely today, you lovely hairstyle today, darling. You're such a great guy. Yeah, and don't, doesn't my shirt look very pretty? Your, your shirt looks very nice too. Um, You're just wonderful. In other words, we're just <laughs> complimenting each other. 
Now, of course, some of that might be true. <laughs> I'm not suggesting any of that isn't true in this case. But, but can you see that um, if all we're doing is to exchange addictions with each other, particularly from an emotional perspective, not having a willingness to confront truth, not having a willingness to grow in faith, how to grow in the way we use our will, grow in the way that we uh, become humble, and in particular grow in the way that we love, then all we could be doing is just having a, like, um, I, I, I was going to say some rude things actually, but um, <laughs> uh, so I won't do that, but um, we could basically be just going, you're nice, I'm nice, we're both nice, isn't it wonderful? Or, and, wow, I worked through this emotion the other day. Yes, darling, what was that? <laughs> well, I had all this big grief with my dad and it was really good and I really felt really close to God afterwards. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, what have you been working through? Oh, well, I had a lot of... <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> so, so why do I even have to share my experience? If I really had it, I probably wouldn't even bother sharing it. Unless it was going to teach another person something. That's very different to someone saying, gee, I'm really stuck on this issue, and me thinking, wow, I was stuck on that issue once, and this is what I did. Here, let me, let me tell you what happened. Yeah. That's a very different exchange. Can you feel the difference in the exchange? Yeah. yeah. So looking so far at these particular facts, so let's, let's assume now we wanted to stay and start a group in our own home where... We would just have a few people get together and we, you know, try to work through issues growing in love, you know, and we want to... And who knows what the program might be. We might decide it's all sorts of things involved. We might watch a video here. We might go out and watch a movie and try to connect emotionally to what they were saying. There's all sorts of things we could choose to do in the group, right? But the responsibility for the condition of love exists with the person who created it. The de facto teacher is the person who created it, right? And the condition of the person forming the group is going to have a large effect on who comes. In other words, it's the condition of the person forming the group that determines what attractions primarily are going to be in effect in the group. Is that not true? The soul drawing people in. So if you're a male and you start a group and there's all these five angry women come along, and that's your first group, what does that tell you? They're obviously angry with a male. You're the only male there, right? They're obviously angry with a male. And they've obviously got stuff to work through, but so do you. You know, so do you. The fact that you've attracted four angry women who are angry with men into your group is an indication that you are either, you are probably pandering to them, you're probably letting them get away with murder, as the saying goes, you know, that you're letting them get away with a whole lot of unloving things and your initial attractions are there to show you what you're getting away with. Now, it's the same on Facebook. I create a Facebook page and the very first people attracted to my page are all these people who are, you know, angry and resistive and, you know, tell, want to boss me around and tell me what to do and all of those kind of things. So what does that tell me? It tells me I've got to work through a lot of issues about the receiving of all of that. What, what's actually going on inside of me. It's exactly the same Facebook or in person with regard to the group. Now, if this is the case, if these three things are the case, what do you do with a group, is the question. Well, firstly, since the person forming the group has the responsibility for the condition of love in the group, it is imperative that the person who formed the group starts to understand what love would do. What would love do in any situation? Uh, because if the person forming the group doesn't know what love would do, do you think they're going to attract anybody into the group that, who knows what love would do either? <laughs> of course not. Right? So it's, it's very important that the person forming the group has some self-analysis about what they believe love to be, has some analysis from God's perspective about what love actually is. So, so for example, angry person comes along to the group. So angry Mary comes along to the group. Right now, in your country, it's there, there, there. What's wrong? What, what's going on for you? You know, we spend more time with the angry person in most countries than we do with anybody else. Is that not true? Well, I call that pandering to the angry person. Right? Because if the angry person comes to the group, they're bringing along this terrible energy, 
uh, with them. Their, their own emotional energy is, is angry and resistive, right? And on top of that, they're going to be surrounded by spirits who also will be totally willing to use this person now to attack anybody in the group. Is that not true? So now I've not only got the person, but I've got their entourage to address, right? And it is my attraction. I'm the person creating the group. It's my attraction. What do I do? Now, you know what mostly happens? Oh, yeah, no worries. It's great to have a new member in our group. That means we've got two now. We're so popular. <laughs> we've doubled our membership. This is so good. I've got lots of friends as well. Yeah, yeah, bring <laughs> them along. Bring them along. Yeah. And then if the person gets really angry and says, I'm not going to come to the group again if you like this, we go, okay, okay, I just won't be like that. You need to keep coming to the group. We start pandering to the person who is in the lower condition of love. Now, does that, we, the reason why I brought up the way God organizes the spirit world, if we've got a, a spirit in the third sphere of the spirit world and one in the first, can the first sphere spirit even get to meet with that person? How? No, no, he can. Yeah. So how? Nice how. Yeah. Uh, so, Floyd? The one in the third He sphere has to come has down to and come have down. a chat with him, doesn't he? Basically, that's what's got to happen. He's got to come down and have a chat with him. That's the only way they could even meet is for the person in the third sphere to exercise some of his love to share with another person who potentially needs some help. So... On earth, it's not, that's possible. A person in the third sphere and a person in the first sphere can meet easily, can I not? Yeah. So, so that's all, very much a possibility. In the third sphere, not possible. In your forums, it's possible for that to occur, isn't it? Yeah. So how do you prevent it from occurring? So in other words, if this person comes along and they bring in all their anger, you know, rage, all of their condescension... Control. All of their control, right, into your Facebook forum. Now, God's laws don't allow that person to do that in the, in the third sphere. So what would you do if you were running your forum the way God's laws run? Would you allow that person in the forum? No, you wouldn't. And then, and then what say there were all these other people who were a little bit better conditioned and you removed this person from the forum because of, of the condition and then all these other persons attacked you for removing that person. What would you do there? Is a person who attacks another able to be in the third sphere? No, they're not. So what would you do? You'd remove them too. It's just <laughs> you and the group. <laughs> Does that make sense? But I guarantee it won't be just you and the group in the end because you will have worked through some things and your, emotional, your emotions will have changed and therefore your attractions will change. Does that make sense? So you're ready for new attractions. You'll have worked through some things. Now, if you don't do that, if you don't do what God naturally does with the spheres of the spirit world, if you don't do that, and remember, I'm not talking about this being your definition of love. I'm talking about it being God's. Right? If you don't do that, what does it do? to that location, whether it's a physical location or a location on the internet or whatever. What does it do? Monty, what does it do? It brings it all down to the lower sphere condition. Correct. So now we have a forum that really resides in the hills. And this is why many of the forums that people on the Divine Love Path start finish up residing in the hills. Because they just pander, pander, pander to all the people who are in an angry, hellish condition, right? trying to bend over backwards to listening to them, and they don't get rid of either the people. That, when I say get rid of we're not getting rid of them like cutting their throat. <laughs> we're getting rid of them from stopping the influence of their lack of love on other people. Right? You don't want to be a person, if you set up a forum or, or something in your own home, you don't want to be a person that just enabled a group of nasty people who come along to attack a group of other people who are nice, you don't want to do that. That would be the opposite of what God's laws would require of you. And, that, and yet that is what's happening most of the time on these forums. Does that make sense, so, Patricia? Okay. 
Okay, this is kind of a big question, but uh, as I understand it, God created the earth in a different way than the spirit world. God did. Different things happen here. Yes. So is it that our goal is to to change the way the earth works so that it's more like the way the spirit world works? Well, that's certainly mine. I don't know whether that's yours. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the option that God has given us. Okay. Yeah. It's under direct control of our will here. Yeah. See, more of God's will is exercised in yeah. these spheres. So that's what we're trying to do. Here. Yeah, we're yeah, trying really. to refine our will here. Or well, I am. In, in the end, he what is. we're trying to do... <laughs> In the end, what we're trying to do is bring, isn't it, bring the earth from its hell condition into a higher condition of love. How are we going to do that? By acting in hellish or by acting in the higher condition? You can see that we need to get to the higher condition and act in harmony with that higher condition. Now, if we know what God's laws would do in any situation, one way that we're going to assist ourselves to do it is to work in harmony with what God's laws say. And that doesn't matter how much attack you get from others. So someone will go and say to you, so, like, so for example, let's say I'm that person and I removed this person because they were projecting anger, rage, condescension, control. They were belittling, they were personally attacking other people on the forum, not even myself. Right? And in fact, if it was myself, I'd be having a bit longer of a process about it before. But if I observed it with somebody else between two other people, then my process is quite short, like instant decision. Right? But if it, if it was towards me, then I would at least have to go through some emotions about it first, right? because I realised I attracted that somehow, and what am I attracting it to learn? So I'd have to consider these things. But let's say I'm this person, and I removed this fella right, from the group. So I've removed his influence. Isn't that a good thing? If he has no desire to come to this condition of love, which is what I want my forum to be in, uh, I want my forum to at least be in my condition of love, surely. I'm the one who started the forum. I surely would want it to be in at least the condition that I feel I am in. And if I could feel very strongly that he's definitely not in the condition I'm in, my first question to him is, do you want to become more loving? And if his actions and everything are proving that he doesn't want to become more loving, then I'm, I, I, I must remove him from what I've created in order to maintain the purity of what I've created. It's a, it's a, it's a must, not, not even an option, if I really wanted to progress towards love and God. So I, I remove him. And then all of these other people in the forum who are in a bit higher condition than he was go and attack me for not honouring free will. In other words, they use a, a divine love or divine truth term in order to attack me. And I go, no, I did honour his free will. He could freely choose to act in the harmony with love. And he didn't. Does that make sense? And so what do I do then? I have, I have to honour my own free will by saying, well, you're not choosing to act in harmony with love on my creation. Now, isn't this the same principle as if they were, you were inviting them into your own home? Let's say you invited somebody to your own home. They walked in the door. They started, you know, weeing in the corner, <laughs> defecating in the other place, you know, smashing like you smashing cups. up your crockery. And uh, what would you be doing? <laughs> would you be going, oh, free will. <laughs> Like, now, if he did it to his own house, that's fine, isn't it? He's allowed to do it to his own. If that's the condition he wants to live in, in a hellish condition in his own house, that's fine. It's none of your business, actually. But the fact that he's doing it in yours, that's definitely your business, is it not? Right? So definitely your business when somebody is harming you in some way in your own place. Or harming others. Or harming others in your own place. Let's say they came in, you've got a family of four, and you've got a, a daughter and a son, and this... And this person comes in and they start beating around your son. Like, and this is what's happening on many of these forums, by the way. This is what is literally happening. People come into the forums and they start beating up other people on the forum. And would you say to your son, you're attracting that son. He's got his free will. He can beat up on you. Would you do that? No. You'd go, hang on a sec. This is wrong. You need to leave. Well, otherwise, I'd call the police, wouldn't you? Right? So, so why aren't you doing the same thing on the forum? 
And then somebody, all they have to do is say, oh, but it's free will. We've got free will on the phone. No, you don't have an unrestricted use of free will. If you believe you do, you haven't understood any of my teachings properly. The reality is every decision you choose to make, if it's in harmony with love, you have complete freedom. That's the only condition. If it's harmonious with love, you have complete freedom. When it's not harmonious with love, you don't have complete freedom anymore because the laws have consequences that have an impact on your soul and your environment immediately. So that's not freedom anymore. It's restricted. So, so the freedom is dependent upon love in a lot of ways. Can you see? You're being restricted now with your will and God's laws have been created for this very purpose so that no anarchy can exist in God's universe. And if you read through the pageant messages, one of the primary things we said over and over again is anarchy cannot exist in God's universe. God made laws that govern his universe. Yeah, and it's great, isn't it? Like, Phew. <laughs> you know, it's 